All right, we're going to be continuing our uh, series on Joseph, one of my favorite characters out of the Old Testament. And w last time we left off, Joseph um, was sold into slavery by his brothers. That we saw that tragically happen, something that he did not deserve, he never saw coming. But he stayed faithful to God, and God blessed him, and he rose to be the overseer of Potiphar's entire household. So even though Joseph's life took a huge dip, um, God was still there, God was still faithful, and good things happened. But unfortunately, we'll see if the story gets even crazier. What happens next? Potiphar's wife uh, becomes angry at Joseph, and she lies and gets him arrested unfairly. And he, So he's unfairly arrested, and he's thrown in prison. He goes from overseeing Potiphar's whole house to being thrown in prison. And this is one of the most tragic moments of Joseph's life. He didn't deserve to be thrown in prison. He was a good man. Potiphar's wife lied about him. And here he finds himself stuck in prison. You know, it smells bad. It's moldy. And, and there's it, it's dungeony and dark. And he's terrified. But what, what sets Joseph apart as a man of really strong faith is how he responds to the situation. What happens next is crazy. Um, the Bible says, while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. So even in prison, God's blessing was on Joseph. And what happens? Joseph oversees the entire prison and the warden trusts him completely. And what I want us to stop and think about, our first point I want to take away from this lesson, is that how you respond to the most difficult situations defines who you are. The reason why we remember Joseph as such a courageous character, such a man, a powerful man of God, is that the difficult situation he was in, he was stuck in prison, something terrible, he did not deserve it. The way he responded defined who he was. He did not let the the difficulty of prison keep him down he maintained his faith in god and god blessed him and he was able to thrive even in somewhere as dark as prison and so that's our first point how you respond to most difficult situations to find who you are i want to look at romans 5 3 and 4 um a couple verses that kind of speak to similar thing that Joseph is going through. And the, these verses were written by a man named Paul. This was 1,500 years after Joseph. Paul um, is writing these words, but the two men have some similarities. They're both men of God. And Paul, just like Joseph, spends time in prison unfairly just because he believed in Jesus. He was thrown in prison. So Paul could relate to what Joseph was going through. And this is what Paul writes. He says in Romans 5, 3 and 4, he says, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. So what does Paul say? He says he's thankful for those difficulties because they helped him develop endurance and character and grow in his faith. Can you believe that? Paul, who was unfairly thrown in prison for years uh, at times, he still thinks that those situations helped him grow closer to God. I can't even imagine having the character to think that way. And Joseph's the same way as Paul. He took his time in prison as an opportunity to still remain faithful to his God. And now we're going to dive into the second half of the story and see what happens um, to Joseph in prison. But I want you to think about the fact that Joseph was able to rise above his difficult situation and maintain faith in his God. So, here Joseph is in prison, and he meets a couple people. He meets the royal cupbearer and the royal baker, and they share their dreams with Joseph. And do you remember that Joseph could interpret dreams? Remember back last week we learned that Joseph had some crazy dreams sent from God? Well, he interpreted dreams for the two men, and the cupbearer returned to work for the pharaoh in Egypt. So the cupbearer is out of prison. He returns to work for pharaoh in Egypt. But unfortunately, he forgets all about Joseph. And two years passed. Can you imagine that? Joseph is stuck in prison, unfairly, 
He did nothing wrong, but he's stuck in prison for two years. And finally, the Pharaoh is having some series of really strange dreams, and no one can interpret them for him. And so he's asking around if anyone knows anyone who can interpret dreams. And the cupbearer remembers his old buddy Joseph stuck back in prison from years ago who interpreted some dreams for him. So he, so he told the Pharaoh, hey, I know a guy. So the cupbearer goes and fetches Joseph from prison. Joseph goes up to the Pharaoh and Joseph interprets the Pharaoh's dreams, which in the dreams, he learns that Egypt is going to have seven years of prosperity and then they're going to have seven years of famine. And Joseph explains this to Pharaoh and then Joseph gives Pharaoh some suggestions on what he should do to protect against this famine. And Pharaoh's mind is so blown by Joseph's wisdom and gifts and abilities that Pharaoh decides to put Joseph in charge of the effort to gather up food and prepare for famine. And as Joseph began to do that, Pharaoh was so impressed by how good of a worker and how wise Joseph was, and he saw that God's blessing was on Joseph. Pharaoh, over time, ended up making Joseph second in command over the entire nation of Egypt. Can you believe that? Now that is a real rags to riches story. Joseph went from the lowest of the low, being stuck in prison, no, no, with no sight of any hope except his faith in God, to being the overseer of the entire land of Egypt. Pretty crazy story. And what I want us to take away from this part of the story is that God was always there. God was always faithful. God is always faithful to his promises. He just asks you to trust him. Joseph knew in his heart that God would be faithful. He, it even took him years, but he continued to trust that God would come through on his promises. And I want to read for you a verse out of the book of Hebrews. This is Hebrews 10, 23. It says, Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promises. God can be trusted to keep his promise. This verse is encouraging to us to know that God has promised to bless us and be there for us and that we can hold our trust in him. Let us hold tightly without wavering. And that's just what Joseph did. He held tightly without wavering for all those years, waiting for God to come through on his promises. And God did in amazing ways. And he blessed Joseph so much, but he also blessed the entire world because Joseph helped provide food during the famine and saved countless lives. And that Hebrews 10, 23 was our verse for the week. So you can go back and check that out one more time. But as we end the story, I want you to think about how faithful Joseph was to God. Joseph remained faithful to God and God remained faithful to Joseph. And that's why this is such an encouraging story. It's about a, a man and God's relationship and how strong that was. And that's my encouragement for you guys. Next week, we'll go into the end of the story as Joseph's family come to Egypt and they have that first interaction after years of not seeing each other. It's very dramatic. It's pretty crazy what happens, but stay tuned for that next week. But that's it for this week. You can go check out our verse of the week, Hebrews 10, 23. Thanks for watching, and we'll wrap up our Joseph series next week.